Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are so. Tonight, new face Mike Fultonevich takes the mound in his first start of his big league career, staring down some of the biggest bats in all of baseball. His mound opponent, rookie Anthony DiSclafani, holds the National League's lowest ERA, but his stuff might not be good enough to hold out a red-hot Freddie Freeman and the rest of the Braves. It's Friday Night Braves Baseball, Game 2, Reds and Braves from Atlanta next. Braves baseball's on the air from Turner Field in Atlanta. Game two of our four-game set between the homer-hitting Cincinnati Reds and we hope the pitching strong Atlanta Braves. Special night tonight. Two terrific youngsters get after it in game two of the set. Chip and Joe with you. You know all about the trades and who's not here for Atlanta. The exciting time for Braves country starts now. Mike fulton makes his Braves debut as a starter tonight. And it's his first major league start. He'd made four starts down at Gwinnett. And while he didn't have a win, his ERA was outstanding in the low twos. He also was leading the International League in strikeouts with 30. He's developed a hard slider over his last couple of starts. That's really paid dividends. We'll tell you more about that as we go along. But exciting news to see him on the mound tonight against Anthony DiSclefani, who came over from the Miami Marlins in the deal for Matt Latos. And all he's done is just set the National League on fire with leading ERA. This guy throws hard. He's got a hard sinker and he has been really tough on right handed hitters so far this year. Here are the numbers on him and his good start and you can see averaging less than a walk and hit per inning pitch. Future bright for these two young men and for the Braves. Mr. Fulton Evich's future begins now. Starting lineups and first pitch game two Reds and Braves baseball from Turner Field coming up after the break. Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. Not a cloud in the sky above Turner Field in Atlanta. Game two of this series between the Reds and the Braves, and the future's now for Mike Fultonevich. 
There are his numbers at Gwinnett. 0 and 3, but a 2.08 ERA and 30 strikeouts in 21 plus innings. And he pounds the strike zone with a 93 mile an hour fastball. 66 degrees, wind blowing in tonight as Mike faces Billy Hamilton, who's quickly behind, nothing and two. Hamilton hit a homer here last night. He's one for five in the series. He was a little late on 96 mile an hour gas. Four keys to pitching success for Mike Fultonavich tonight. Number one, April 20th. That's when he started using that hard slider. 13 plus innings. He struck out 18 batters in the two starts that followed. Secondary pitches. We all know he can throw hard. Hopefully he can locate that fastball tonight, but it's going to be dependent on his secondary pitches. Slider, curveball, changeup as to how much success he'll have. And up and away with two in a row to Billy Hamilton. And popped again out of play. Mike's a big guy. 6'4, 220, just 23 years old, lives in Manuka, Illinois. And was a first round pick by the Astros back in 2010. And a drive hit toward right. Marcakis on the run. He'll get there. And Billy Hamilton's retired on a line drive out to right field. Here's the rest of the Reds starting night presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. They hit four homers last night. Cozart, Bono, Frazier, Bruce, Phillips, Marlon Bird. Back home here in Atlanta. Brian Pena, former Brave behind the plate, and Anthony DeSclafani, a terrific rookie pitcher, goes to the mound for the Reds. Zach Cozart, one for four in the set, and takes inside. You will see a lot of mid to upper 90s fastballs from Fulton Evich tonight. That is, as Joe said, a big part of his repertoire, and what makes him special, we're told, is he can maintain that velocity over six or seven innings. Yeah, that's what Freddie was talking about before the ball game. Bobby Cox said, and as you alluded a moment ago, Major League hitters can time a jet. The other stuff has to work to make that fastball its most effective. As Billy Hamilton just demonstrated. The need for that hard slider was that he had a slider that was kind of soft and then an, and a curveball that was even slower yet. And they wanted him to try to work on a, an extra slider that was harder. That was more in the 80s, mid 80s range. And that's what he's been trying to do in his last two starts at Gwinnett and proved to be very successful with it. I would imagine that's hard to do when you're used to throwing everything hard. <laughs> how, yeah. How, how to get enough separation between that hard slider and a hard mid 90s fastball. That one missed inside. It's full count. Line drive into right field. Mark Kakis won't get there. And Cozart flips the bat out and singles with one out. Here's the Braves' defensive lineup tonight. Mark Kakis, as you've seen, is in right field. Eric Young and Kelly Johnson in center and left. Alberto Cayasco at third base. A.J. Brzezinski, veteran catcher, works with the rookie pitcher. Peterson and Simmons up the middle. And not just Billy Hamilton, but some other guys in this lineup may test A.J. Brzezinski tonight. Might get a sampling of it right here. Runner goes. First pitch, Votto singles to right. The Braves deked Cozart beautifully. He doesn't know where the baseball is. And Edwardson Simmons just saved a base on a single to right field. That was one of the all-time deeks right there, folks. He goes in head first because Anderson is pointing up like there's a pop up. So he thinks he's there's a pop up. And he's got to go back to first. That was a beauty. And Cozart's giving him an earful. One yeah. shortstop to another. So back to back Cincinnati hits first and second now for Todd Frazier. 
beat an eighth inning home run last night. Rangers got seven long balls, 16 RBIs. Now Cozart's going to try to steal, and it's a double steal. Votto takes second, Cozart takes third, and you're right, Joe, they are going early in the count. Third for Votto, second for Cozart. And went on the first pitch. The Reds now with 25 stolen bases. They've been caught once. And now a chance for Frazier to knock home two runs with the first inning single. Or get struck out. He's behind 0 and 2. Here it comes. And he does strike out. 98 mile an hour heat letter high. That's the equalizer. Two down. Upstairs, as we talked about last night with Shelby Miller, that's a tough pitch to catch up to. Shelby was successful with it. It took about seven innings for someone to actually hit that pitch. And it was Burkhart. Barnhart, beg your pardon. Two on, two out for Jay Bruce. He's hit five homers, batting 181 for the year. I told you last night, Jay Bruce sidelined for much of the year with knee problems. Still hit 18 homers. And he looks inside at ball two. Boy, Shelby was good last night, wasn't he? He pitched another great game for the Braves, his fifth of the season, but took his first loss. Yeah, pitched a whole lot better than what the final score looked like. It's like they're not going to give much. To Jay Bruce here with a base open right hander on deck. They didn't a four pitch walk. So Bruce aboard to load the bases for Brandon Phillips. Stone Mountain native. Was ill last night did not play. Right handers didn't hit much off of Fulton Evich in triple A. They were only nine for 53, a 170 average with a homer. So they like their chances better with a right hander, even though it's Brandon Phillips, than with a lefty. So here's where the control of Fulton Evich comes into play. No place to put Brandon Phillips in the top of the Reds first. Only 22 pitches for Mike. Phillips has knocked in 10. He's hit one homer. And he was aggressive early in the count. Foul straight back, strike one. Cozart singled, Votto singled. They had a double steal after a Frazier strikeout. Bruce walked. Now Brandon Phillips takes way outside. Brandon's 33 now. He's down to his last strike. That almost looked like a two seam sinker. And it was. Backed it off to 94. That must be fun to be able to do, huh? I would think. Well, he's up and just fire one in at 94. One two pitch. And Phillips just pokes that ball into center field on a one two count and a couple of runs are going to come home for Cincinnati. It's two to nothing.
Bruce all the way around to third base and the Reds have struck first just stuck his bat out there breaking ball stayed in the middle of the plate he was fooled but just lofted it in there so two runs three hits for the Reds in the first that brings up Marlon Byrd. Marlon was one for three. Runner goes and the pitch a strike. I mean they are running at will. Another stolen base. First for Phillips. Very slow to the plate is Fulton Evich. High leg kick. Deliberate delivery. They got a good scouting report. High fly ball hit deep toward left. Kelly Johnson back to the wall is going to have room right at the 380 side. The ballpark big enough to hold it. Marlon Bird can't believe it. He thought it was out of here. Win held it up. Cincinnati settles for two in the top of the first. Fani and a close call for Marlon Bird. Yeah. Uh, Fulton Avich thought it was five to nothing. He walked in, wanted a new baseball, got it from David Rackley, the home plate umpire, and then realized what? Stayed in the park, so he caught a break. And he, Marlon still can't believe it. He hit that ball as hard as he possibly could, and it died right at the 380 sign. This is Anthony DiSclefani. Nine home games in his career, 0 and 3. Road games, 4 and 0 with an 070. I'd say that's pretty stout. He is 2 and 1 on the year in a National League leading 1.04 ERA. He just missed to leadoff man Nick Markakis. If you're to gauge the early returns of the trade that sent Matt Latos to Miami and Dee Sclafani to the Reds, advantage Cincinnati. As he missed low, 3 0. Low 90s fastball with some good sinking action, slider and a change up. Nick leads the team with 15 walks. He's way ahead in the count. And that went over. And one. He 
Vince Clafani is 6'1", 190, 24 years old, out of Colts Neck, New Jersey. Originally a sixth round pick by Miami back in 2011, or excuse me, by, actually by Toronto out of the University of Florida. Now the 3 2. And bounced foul at first. So Braves going to see three of the best the Reds have to offer in this series. I don't know if he can pitch much better than Mike Leake did last night. We've got Dee Sclafani with that 1.04 ERA, and then Johnny Cueto will make his 200th big league start here on Sunday. And strike three over the inside corner for Osmar Kekas. Nice rally from a 3-0 count. Here's the rest of the starting nine for the Braves, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Alberto Cayaspo gets the run at third base. He'll hit second tonight. Kelly Johnson's red hot. He's in left. Chase Peterson has a nice hitting streak, too, and hopefully the Braves can come back for Fulte in his first game as a Brave. That's short hopped. One ball, no strikes for Cayaspo. It's never good news when one of your prime players gets hurt. That's what happened to Chris Johnson last night. He injured his hand on a slide into second base. But a classic case of making lemonade out of lemons. Apparently that injury to Chris's hand is not as bad as it could have been. Sharply hit the sinking line drive and Votto. Made the call or made the play, had to wait for the call from Jerry Lane at first. And Kayaspo is the second out. Let's take another look at it and see if he did catch it in the air. Votto's body kind of blocked Jerry Lane from the actual catch. The other news on Chris Johnson, what we thought was going to be a broken hand when we showed up today. Actually, the x-ray showed a break from an old injury to his left hand. Last night was mostly just a bone bruise, and a bad one. Happened on an attempted steal of second. And on this slide, he got his hand trapped under him. Swing and a miss by Freddie Freeman and on three pitches he's retired and so are the Braves a couple of strikeouts for the Reds right hander and they lead two nothing after one.
injury that he suffered last night. And as Joe said, some good news out of the bad news, maybe not as bad as originally expected with that left hand. Chris today saw him in the clubhouse. He is wearing just a splint and a brace on that left hand. Does not have to have a hard cast, just has to keep it immobilized for at least a solid week. But the prognosis right now, he's going to be reevaluated in two weeks, and they're saying possibly three to six weeks for his return. Let's hope for the three week. Yeah. So while Chris is absent, a man to his left, Phil Gosselin figures to see a lot more playing time. Phil can play just about any place you need him to on the infield as Brian Pena takes the ball low. And the Braves, by disabling Chris Johnson, didn't have to make another roster move to accommodate Fulton Evich. Because the Braves don't know really what to expect from this kid, they opted to keep another pitcher in the bullpen just in case he has a short night or a high pitch count shortens his night. Foul ball found Pierzynski again. Side of the mask this time. And I'm pretty sure he told Brian Payne, hey, straighten that stuff out, will you please? Yeah, your catcher. You ought to know better. Brian Payne, you're one of the very nicest guys in the game, always with a smile on his face. I saw him down by the cage today, hustling over to say hello to Jeff Porter and Jim Lovell. There's Lovey. Deep count for Pena and foul away. Ryan's gotten most of the playing time for the Reds behind the plate. And deservedly so. He's hitting 310 for the year. And a line drive toward left is caught by Kelly Johnson. One out. Here's a look at the defensive lineup for the Braves tonight. Mind you, Kelly Johnson, Eric Young, and Marcakis left to right in the outfield. They might give AJ some help should any more Reds runners get on base. They've stolen three bases already tonight. Swing and a miss. A couple of RBIs for Di Sclafani in his career. He's got some catching up to do if he's going to do Mike Leak. Like work at the plate. Leak hit his fifth big league homer. Out of play to the right. That's not the most ever by a Reds pitcher. Joe Nuxall. No kidding. 13 of them. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that either. Huh. The late great Joe Nuxall. Boy, we miss him. We go to Cincinnati. Longtime partner of. Marty Brenneman on the Reds radio network. A terrific pitcher. Two balls, two strikes. Probably would have guessed Don Gullen. He was an outstanding athlete. Too short. Simmons hangs with the hop and gets the pitcher for out number two. Back to the top we go and Billy Hamilton. Red start play tonight 11 wins 11 losses. They're four and a half games off the pace in the National League Central. The Cardinals at the moment lead the Cubs by two games. Chicago won one to nothing today at home over Milwaukee. That was a John Lester start. And Addison Russell the kid shortstop for the Cubs hit his first big league homer. That was the only run needed on Chicago's north side. Milwaukee now five and 18 on the year. Good first pitch. Slow breaking ball for a strike.
little tight, I think. One ball, one strike. I don't know what was wrong with that. Driven toward right. Marquecas on the run, can't get it, and it bounces into the seats. And that's a good thing because Hamilton would have had at least three. A ground rule double will put Hamilton at second base with two outs. Hey, what he has turned on a couple of fastballs. Marquecas was that close. You know, talking to some people with the Reds, it, they don't want Billy Hamilton to just be a slap hitter to take advantage of his tremendous speed. They want him to drive the ball and saw a home run last night, line drive out today, and then a ground rule double. Generally considered a better right handed hitter than left. They pretty much taught him how to hit left handed after he turned pro. 39 of his 141 hits last year were for extra bases. That's a good point, Joe. He's got some pop. And now Zach Gozart bats for the second time. He's already got a hit and has scored a run. 2 nothing Reds. A two run hit by Brandon Phillips in the opening inning. Last year Billy Hamilton stole 56 bases. That was the good news. The bad news is he was caught 23 times. That led the league. And a fly ball again to left. Kelly Johnson getting some exercise. Makes a jumping catch at the warning track. And he makes the play to retire the side. A.J. Brzezinski leads off. He landed a second down a pair. Tonight's T-Mobile game changer, and that would be smiling face of A.J. Brzezinski. About all of his stuff that he's done here since the beginning of the season. He's got a 12-game hitting streak, and among Major League catchers, the best average and on-base percentage, second in RBIs and home runs. I'd say that's pretty good work by the Braves backstop so far. Let's see if he can make these Glafani work. Strike. It's 0 and 1. My poor grandfather, rest his soul, would need therapy if he had to broadcast oh this game tonight. Oh. You know, this guy, De Scalapini. <laughs> <laughs> My drive right center field a hit for A.J. Prasinski. And speaking of Scalapini, we got feel in the bullpen. <laughs> and Prasinski with a 13-game a hitting streak. <laughs> A.J. goes down and gets that sinker, lines it into right center. <laughs> he may be 
Piscalopini the rest of his career to us. A uh, chance to tie it up with Kelly Johnson up there. He's five hits away from a thousand. Broken bat. And that's going to bounce out to second. And safe at first is Kelly Johnson. Look how far that bat went. Wow. What an awful feeling for A.J. Pruszynski. That's the ultimate I'm in no man's land play, isn't it? Yes. Doesn't know if it's going to be caught or allowed to drop here by Cozart. You see him stopping and then they turn it into a force play. So one on, one out, and Jace Peterson, the batter. Downstairs. Jason swinging the bat. Five game hitting streak, seven hits in that stretch. Yeah, he's bumped his average up, you can see there, almost to 250. Some good work. So far for <laughs> Anthony <laughs> D, D. Scalapini, he's throwing hard and at the knees right off both sides of the plate. We'll have to ask the Marlins the next time we see them what what did they not like about him and what did they like more about Matt Latos? Because it seems to me with what the Marlins are trying to do in Miami, this guy would fit into their plans perfectly. He was the 2013 minor league pitcher of the year for the Marlins too. When it combined nine and six, a couple of different stops. Down the left field line, will he keep it fair? No, he missed a double by an arch. That's a shame. Excellent camera work there by Tex Fay. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought Tex was on high first. This Jerry Krause. No wonder when I said University of Florida, I didn't get some feedback from Tex when I mentioned Scalapini. That's <laughs> so, a killer. Sorry. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. A little low. Well, he does keep everything mid thigh and lower. Mm -hmm. He did give up five runs his last time out, but only one was earned. That was against the Cubs. Got beat five to two. He but five hits, two walks in five innings. Struck out five. Gave up a homer as well. That was the only earned run. Four and zero on the road. Zero and three at home for his career. He leads by two in the second. Full count pitch. Kelly Johnson leads and runs from first. The pitch is low. Ball four. Two on, one out. Anderson Simmons fighting it a bit at the plate. All for his last 11. He hit into a couple of double plays yesterday for the Braves. So Freddie Gonzalez moves him down in the order. A chance to drive home Kelly Johnson with a second inning hit. Simmons at 247 for the year. He's got 13 runs batted in. That RBI total, the second highest on the team to A.J. Brzezinski's 14. Low. 
This guy's got a lot of movement. First start Pittsburgh six innings two earned runs. Against the Cubs seven innings no earned runs. Against Milwaukee eight innings two hits no earned runs. And I mentioned his last start against the Cubs. Slow roller toward Frazier at third. He's going to have one play. It's to first. And that's in time. Kelly Johnson to third. Peterson to second. Eric Young Jr., the hitter, a base open. Pitcher due next. And two out. Well, if they decide to pitch to him, maybe he can dump one in like Brandon Phillips did. Nope, they're going to walk him. So Young will be intentionally passed. We'll see how Fulton Evich fares. As you heard Jen report on Braves Live, Fulton Evich didn't get to hit a triple A. Starts were against American League teams, and so those games used the designated hitter. And with Houston, now an American League team, and it's still strange to say that for me. Yes, it is. They have the DH as well, so. This will be his first plate appearance in the big leagues or minors. So, kid, first major league start, your first time up at the plate, you got the bases loaded. Go get it. Swing hard in case you hit it. I think that's family. But a good chance. <laughs> Pitch. Low ball one. Back where it came from. He made contact. Uh, Di Sclafani makes the play, and the Braves load the bases but cannot score. We head to the third inning. It's 2 0 Reds. As you know, is right here on Fox Sports South. If you're listening to me, you already know that. But over on Sports South and streaming on Fox Sports Go, the Hawks are on the road against the Brooklyn Nets in Game Six of the NBA playoffs. We'll keep you updated on the Hawks' score. They're tipping off any moment if they haven't already. So the Hawks can finish off the Nets tonight, and hopefully the Braves can come back on the Reds here at Turner Field. Tough to chop when you have cotton candy on your fingertips. Very hard. 
But big crowd here tonight for Friday Night Fireworks and the first big league start for Mike fulton -Evich. What makes it hard is after you do the chop is separating your fingers after that. Let's see if Mike can settle in here. Joey Votto leads off, then Frazier, then Bruce. And he missed inside ball one. Typical Joey Votto numbers. Big time batting average, lots of homers, lots of RBIs. And if he has a big year, chances are good the Reds are going to have a big year. Cincinnati four and a half games off the pace in the Central. Mike was very unlucky in the first inning and then he got very lucky in the first inning. Unfortunate that that little bloop from Phillips dropped in to drive in two runs and then very lucky that the ball Marlon Bird hit didn't land in the seats. Stiff breeze blowing in and across toward the right field corner saved a five nothing deficit. Still hasn't gotten that breaking ball to bite enough. No, he steps a little bit toward the third baseline when his left foot lands. So he's having to throw across his body some. And so, lead off walk. Something Don Sutton knows a thing or two about. Talking to him about it. Don I had one of the best curveballs in the history of the game. He was talking about how that front foot, in this case, Fulton Avich's left foot, if it doesn't step to the plate, then it's hard. For your arm to come across that that closed foot, if you will. And this is another area where I think Mike's got to sharpen his repertoire with base runners on. The Reds ran wild on him in the first inning. Three steals. Bouncing ball fouled at third. And a strike to Todd Frazier. Well, he just shortened that up. He used a slide step there instead of a high leg kick. Frazier struck out on a 97 98 mile an hour fastball right under the Cincinnati letters on his gray uniform top. Pop back toward us and just overhead. But oh Chris is going to have to make a play in his. Rookie assignment here tonight. Going to check out his hands or his ability to quickly duck under the table. How fast he is. Well, unlike others, he didn't have a hot dog to worry about, so both <laughs> hands were ready. <laughs> but it's early. Hot dogs come in the sixth inning. Upstairs, 0 oh, and 2 the count for Todd Frazier. Breaking ball and a good one in a good spot and a good hitter spoiled it. Sharply hit toward third to second for one. The turn of beauty. Nice work by Jace Peterson at the second base bag. Votto came in, tried to wipe him out. We showed you earlier on the homestand. Extra work for Peterson at second base might have paid off as he turns the double play. Well, this is the way he likes to take the ball, backing up toward right field. That's the spot where Espinosa got him the other night. We'll see if he gets an opportunity later in the game if he changes that. Ground ball turns into a twin killing. That brings up Jay Bruce, who walked in the first inning. I like what A.J. Brzezinski is doing. He's calling some first pitch off speed stuff so as not to just have Mike 
only feel comfortable throwing his fastball. Making him use his pitches. Breaking ball popped up. He had Bruce off stride and Kelly Johnson is in and to a knee he goes to make the catch. Tough wind in the outfield and Kelly Johnson puts that away and we head to the home third. When we come back, John Hart will join us. We'll talk about the first 22 games for the Braves right after this. Better. He's better. Reds two Braves nothing bottom of the third top of the order coming up for Atlanta Nick Marcakis will lead things off you know John Hart good looking shirt good looking yeah. night big crowd kid on the mound throwing 95 mile an hour gas exciting times here in Atlanta. Yeah it really is and I always like to come in when we're hitting and nothing <laughs> nothing good ever happens when I go on and they're hitting. Okay. So look we'll uh, we'll pick us up a couple of points here. Well let's talk about Fulton Evich first. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious you look at this kid. He's got a great arm. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we really wanted him to make the club uh, coming out of spring training. We felt there were some things yet that he needed to do. And uh, we sent him down to AAA. And he's made a couple of adjustments. I'm still looking for a little harder slider. We really worked with him on. That's uh, looks like a nice little six to three. We worked with him trying to get a little firmer slider with it. But. Uh, you know, look, he's not a finished product, but he's 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 there. He can compete out there now. The changeups there. He's got a nice little breaking ball. Um, you saw him running on him there. Then he made the adjustment, went back to the slide step. So, look, uh, I think we can finish off his development up here. This is a kid. Just, he's got a lot of upside. Still, a, a, I mean, a great arm and a really good kid. One of the things Tom Glavin talked about the other night, John, was with regard to a young pitcher being called up, is. Can he handle the adversity because obviously there's going to be days where it's not all peaches and cream and on a ball club that right now is playing about 500 ball. Does he have the kind of makeup to handle those kind of rough days. You know Joe that's a great question and, and you never know do you put the kids in there and again you know this is a boy that we traded for we don't know him all that well but uh, listen he's a tough kid and I, I, I think he does uh, he, he knows there's things he needs to do. Uh, he's work. He's a hard worker. He cares. So I, you know, looking at no, he doesn't want to come out and embarrass himself. But I, I think that you know, having him around Roger, having him around this club, which I, I, I like the makeup around this club, I, I think he's going to be fine. I do. And being able to work to, with a guy like AJ Brzezinski on occasion too doesn't hurt. No, it really doesn't. Listen, not only defensively. I mean, you, you look at AJ. He frames the ball really well. He's he's obviously yeah. experienced. He's been around the block. It's a good guy to to catch your first start. It doesn't. Hurt this guy. Everything he looks at, he's hitting a lot and drives somewhere. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. And 
you know, these, as I said, when you came on the air, this is an exciting time for Braves fans. Look, we know what you had to do to set this organization on a path that you think is going to lead to much greater success later this season, next season, and hopefully when we move into the new ballpark. To see kids like Foltynewicz come up, and there'll probably be more in the weeks ahead. This, I guess, for you has to be very rewarding. To well, see take place. It, you know, Chip, it, it, it great. That's uh, you know what you said there is is accurate. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's some things that you know we want to compete up here. Uh, we we like the club. I think people that have seen the club play these these guys really care. Uh, you know, we're not exactly where we want to be. Um, but we do have some some kids down in Gwinnett that we like that we think have a chance to come up here and help us at some point this year. Freeman to center. Does he lost Hamilton it. see it? Uh, he finally found it. Two out. So yeah, I, I believe me. And in, in looking at uh, a kid like Fulton Evans, uh, uh again, I, I think it's a it's a lot of confidence in the staff and and having Roger McDowell here to spend some time with him and any of the kids that we think that they're ready that they can hold their own and compete that uh, we're not going to be afraid to bring them be pleased with the record is what the record is but are you pleased not just with the record but as you said with the way the team is playing yeah I, I I've really been pleased with it I mean obviously we've struggled a little bit with our rotation which I think going in we were we, we were comfortable with our starting pitching obviously you, you, we lost Mike Miner we've had to make some adjustments and uh, you know I, I I'm, I'm hoping for more out of uh, out of our rotation but um, you know the ball club itself is is played well. I mean we've we've capitalized. We swung the bats maybe a little better than I thought we would. Um, this club plays the game the, the right way. Um, you know it's it's not a big power team, but uh, we, we've got some guys that that know how to play. And if we can get the pitching, keep ourselves in it, we should be okay. You mentioned Mike Miner. Any updates there? You know, right now they're uh, they're still taking a look at uh, at the shoulder. And, uh, right now, it, it it's uh, indecisive as to what it is. There's still pain. Um, I'm not expecting him back anytime soon. So, you know, this is uh, a still a to be determined for Mike. Two quick strikes to AJ Przinsky. Reds two, Braves nothing. Kiaspo at first with two outs. AJ extended his batting streak to 13 games and a bouncing ball off the heel of Otto's glove to his knees and what a catch by Di Sclafani with a bare hand at the first base bag. That was a rocket and AJ Przinsky is robbed by Votto and that one looked like it hurt. He is off the field in a big time hurry. A scorcher sends this game to the top of the fourth inning. And Brian Pena, and really, if it wasn't for the great piece of hitting by Brandon Phillips, we might still be tied. Yeah, again, that was that uh, little breaking ball that he threw. If it's uh, if it's a little sharper, a little harder, what we've talked about, uh, you know, trying to get that 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 slider, that little bit of a more of a power slider in there, he gets him out. But uh, 
you know, these these are great hitters up here. And you make a mistake. I mean, he had a chance. He had him out front. He had him where he wanted, but it just wasn't wasn't enough to where he couldn't put the barrel on it. Breaking ball for a strike. You know, again, uh, when you've got 97, 98 in your quiver, that's a definite weapon. Uh, and you see those 93, 94s that he's throwing. It's a little two seam fastball, um, you know, which has got good life to it. And you know, I, I think the changeup is uh, has improved. And and you guys saw him in spring training. If you notice when he's pitching, he's got a little more of a hip turn. We tried to get him a little bit more, where he could get a little turn, gather himself a little bit. And get behind the ball and uh, it, it, before he was a little more where you see right there he just gets a little bit of a turn and a pause and uh, and, and I think that that helps it's a, it's not so much for deception as it is for him to gather himself and maybe command the ball a little better. Now even the shoulder goes with the hip. It's like a hitter you know, yeah. it's going to follow it. Nothing in two for Phillips. And that one's up the middle of base hit on an 0-2 count. Here's a breaking ball left out over the plate. That was just a matter of location, looked like. Right now, I wish Phillips still had the flu. He didn't play last night. He's two for two in the game tonight. I think he comes home. He comes back to Atlanta and always seems to want to play well. You know, a lot of guys he get, get the pass list. Here comes all his friends. Then he went to high school, what, right down to Redan? Yep. Yeah. Redan High School. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I remember when he came out um, years ago. Um, in fact, he was, uh, I think it was Montreal signed him originally, didn't they? Right. And, uh, First round. He came over in a big Bartolo Cologne trade. I remember to Cleveland. Here's Marlon Bird and popped out of play. We talked a lot about Fulton Evich tonight. Was he the most ready of the other youngsters that you had at Gwinnett? Or was it a matter of his turn came up and you had a need on this particular date? I, I, I think it was a little bit of that, but uh, he was the guy that that we wanted to see. We, we felt he was a little further along. Uh, right now, Williams Perez has been throwing the ball exceptionally well down there. Uh, I really like this guy. I think there's you know, there's a lot of pitchability there with Williams Perez. Uh, Matt Whistler, who we got in the deal, is probably not quite ready yet, as nor is Manny Benuelos. There's still some things we're working on, but uh, I think right now, you know the probably the next guy in line right now is Williams Perez. He's throwing the ball really well down there. One ball, one strike. There's the slide step. The pitch missed upstairs to Bird. Two and one. He's another Atlanta kid. Yeah, he's been around. Uh, when I was in Texas, we actually uh, signed him as a. It was almost like a, a, a six-year free agent. He'd been bounced around a little bit, and we signed him and loved him. He plays real hard. Tough player. Runner goes. Pitch inside. Brzezinski's throw. No chance. And Phillips with his second steal of the night. Reds do a little everything, don't they? Uh, and it's interesting, too, that he, he went on the right he did. pitch because of the high leg kick for well, the first time in two innings that Mike didn't use a slide step. And Phillips guessed right. Yeah, I, you know, this is, again is a part of it that, you know, you, that, that concerns you when you when you bring a young pitcher up that isn't quite finished because these are things that you, you don't want to have to think about. You don't want to have to think about, you know, is he going to be one seven to home plate? You, you you want all your pitchers. We talk about it with the minor leagues that you want all your guys to be one three or under to home plate to give your catcher a chance. Uh, yeah, the great base dealers are going to are going to steal bases on you. But the average guys, when they see a guy one seven, you know, it's uh, it's too much. You're going to have a track meet on your hand. And, you know, this is something that's going to be a part of what we're going to have to figure out up here with Mike. 3-2 pitch and Bird rips that out of play foul. Two runs on five hits for the Reds. They've left three on base. The Braves no runs on one hit. That hit from A.J. Przinsky back leading off the second. Anthony DiSclafani pitching for the Reds. He's got a two-run cushion here in the fourth. That's ball four, two on with nobody out for Brian Pena. You know the one thing when when we when we made the deal uh, for Fulte, I know there was a you know as he came up, I mean everybody knew about the arm and the stuff, and he's got a great body. You know, a lot of people talked about, well maybe this guy's a bullpen guy, and you know I, I I think as we evaluated Mike, we we felt that he does have the ability to have the three pitch mix. I mean he's got the curveball, he's got the changeup. Um, 
strikes. You know, it, it's not that this guy's all over the place. He's 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 just missing. He doesn't have great command. Probably never will have great command. But he's, he's he throws enough strikes. It's not like he's throwing the ball all over the place. I mean, he's really narrowed it down. Um, but he'll miss, like in that one there. He'll let guys walk him back into counts, and uh, you know that's something that you know you. You don't want to be pitching 2 0 2 1 and you got to center cut things even if you're throwing 97. I mean these guys are going to hit it. Chipper Jones always talked about in playoff baseball John the importance of a starting pitcher having strikeout stuff number one type starter punch out stuff in game situations as Pena hits that one toward EY and center there's the grab for the first out and the reason he said that was runner at third you need a strikeout instead of a, a ground ball or a sack fly to stop that add on run from scoring I would assume between man we saw last night Shelby Miller and Mike Fulton Evich if we can all dream a bit and think about postseason play if those two guys develop the way you think those are definite one and one a type starter stuff pitchers yeah absolutely chip that uh, that's a that's a great point because you know when you do look at the number ones you know around the league and you look at guys with the big arms you look at the Harveys and the Fernandez and guys that you know they have the big stuff um, you know even you look at a guy we were talking about this the other day we we're talking about Wainwright when he came up was a guy that had big stuff but he's he's now a pitcher he, he can get away with he it. Evolved, he's, yeah. he's evolved a little bit but um, you know, this is a guy along with Shelby. Both of them have big arms, big stuff. On a bunt attempt, that ball got away from A.J. Pruszynski. Now runners are at second and third on a passed ball. I don't know what happened there. Just got waffled. Sometimes the, the hitter, when they square around like that, Gets in the way. Can put the bat right in the eye level of the catcher and hard to track the baseball in. It's out of the way. One ball, one strike. So one thing in the National League, you you know, you look at the pitcher and you know you're always evaluating because this guy because this guy got any clue up there. This guy taking a pretty good hack here. Well, the guy last uh, night did. Yeah, the guy last yeah, night wasn't bad. Did. No, he wasn't too bad. He's pretty good. He's a pretty good hitter. Did a pretty good job on the mound too. Yeah, nobody. Joe and I were talking about that last night. Nobody's really talking much about the Reds in the National League Central. The, the Cardinals, the, the Pirates, the Cubs. We think that might be a mistake. Well, you know, I think it, it is like anything. It's going to come down to their pitching. Uh, they lost Homer Bailey. That doesn't help them that much. But uh, you know, their offense. I mean, looks like Votto's healthy. It's as good as I've seen him look in two years. And you know Phillips uh, I mean they, they've got some offense on this club they can do some things you talked about it they can run a little bit uh, they catch the ball um, they got the guy at the end of the game that uh, oh yeah is a finisher so you know I think a lot of it's their starting pitching and they've got the good number one in Cueto we'll see him on Sunday he'll make as I said earlier his 200th start against Julio Tehran who John let's be honest hasn't been Julio Tehran the first month of the season. No he really hadn't uh, you know he had a good uh, he had a good first game there in Miami um, and I, I know Rogers spending some time with him working on some things but um, you know Julio is uh, is a guy we certainly count on he had such a you know the last couple of years have been outstanding it's been a you know a great story we love the guy absolutely it's you know it's a slow start for Julio. See if Hopefully, can polish off the pitcher here. Excuse Hopefully, me, Sunday uh, will be the day he gets it back on track. Fly ball toward right. Marquez drifts near the line. Phillips is going to tag, and he is going to come home and score on a sacrifice fly from De Sclafani. And that was the point I was making a moment ago. You get a strike out there, you don't get a run. He makes contact. It's now a, a three-run Reds game. He put up a good fight. He fouled off some pretty good pitches too before that. But that definitely hurts when the pitcher does that to you. Well, he probably hits in that Mike Leak hitting group. And yeah, I'm probably. Sure they've got a little competition <laughs> going there when uh, when those pitchers come out there and hit. So what's your schedule, John, for the next couple of weeks? So you're going to be in Atlanta the rest of the homestand. Yeah. You travel with us. So you're going to head to see the minor leagues. What's yeah, I, I'm going to do a little bit of both. Uh, obviously, stay here through the homestand. Uh, uh, take a look. I've seen the Gwinnett Club. Um, I always like to jump out on the Triple A team. Um, we're obviously getting ready for the draft. We've got a big, uh, you know, a big time coming up in uh, 
in June. I've been talking with uh, Brian Bridges and Roy Clark and uh, the boys getting ready. We've got a lot of picks uh, that we hope to cash in on. Uh, I know is, we eight will. Is 70, eight to 75, right? Eight of the first 75, is that right? We've got five of the first 75 and six of the first 89. Six of 89. And, yeah, wow. so we've got 14 to 28 in the first round, and then we've got, uh, you know, a couple of comp picks, and we jump into the second round, we get another comp pick, so we've, we've, we've been playing with it. Well, John, we always appreciate your time. It's a fun night seeing uh, the present and the future. We'll uh, see if we can come back on the Reds tonight, and you come back and see us again. I sure will. It's always fun, guys. Thanks. John Hart. Great job. Thank you. 3 nothing Reds. Jace Peterson has had a hot bat as of late. Hope to see that continue. He was hitting 462 in his previous four games coming into this series. Had a hit last night. Subject of our lows never stop improving. Let's hope he does never stop. Keep it rolling. Jace, Jace said he's made a few tweaks in the batter's box. Things he's been working on with Kevin Seitzer. And this is something, Joe, you talked about him getting confident up there. He said he's finally getting comfortable with his swing. Thanks, Jen. Good, great report. We'll see Jace Peterson here in a second after Kelly Johnson leads off the Atlanta fourth. Three nothing Reds. De Sclafani has fired a one hit shutout to this point. And he's ahead here one and two. Yeah, to add to that, Jen, the fact that he's playing every day certainly helps one's confidence too. Talking about Jace. Two and two for Kelly. His fastball keeps the left handers up, uh, honest and then can run the sinker away like he did to strike Freeman out in the first inning. That's well hit. Hamilton on the run. He makes the catch. Look at the ground. Billy Hamilton covered to Rob Kelly Johnson. This ball jumped off Kelly's bat. But the jump Billy Hamilton got was just as impressive. You can use that speed in another way to help beat you too. So a ball high to Jace Peterson. Big night for Billy Hamilton. A double and a fine running catch. Let's not forget about Jace Peterson. The Braves are hoping he'll be a very exciting and big part of their present and future as well. 
on a five game hit streak. And the balls bounced out of play foul. One thing the Braves love about Jace Peterson is his coachability and his absorbability of that coaching. You don't have to tell him things twice. And that ball sunk out of sight, and he is out number two. I mean, to tell you, it did and was hard. That was a slider, but it was more like almost like a cutter. It wasn't breaking that much. Three strikeouts for him. And the bases are empty for Anderson Simmons over his last 12. Line driving to right, and Bruce will play that on a hop. When he hits the ball that way, that's a sign of good things to come. Yeah, it's a good point, Chip, that it, when he's doing that, that means he's back on the ball a little bit, not trying to pull as much. And I think after he'd gotten on that hot streak by hitting the ball to right center and right field, had a couple of hits. I think it was in Philadelphia where he pulled the ball. And then all of a sudden, it, he became a little more pull happy again. Young takes a strike. Pitcher spot on deck. Reds are up three. Let's see how carefully they pitch Eric. Stairs. Not sure why Eric is showing that. Let's say he gets it down and he's successful. I guess the anticipation would be that if he gets runners at first and second, then a pinch hitter would come up. He wouldn't ordinarily be trying to bunt in this situation with two out with the pitcher due up next if he thought the pitcher was going to stay in the game. Porter with the signs at third. Young was walked intentionally his first time up. He's ahead in the count here as we approach 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Fourth inning, 3 0 Reds. And Votto tried to steal one at first. That was well fouled, though. 2 and 2. Good crowd here tonight. Offense needs to give him something to cheer about. Two and two. And now a full count. Payne can't find it. Now he does. And Simmons will have a chance to do some running. Brian pointing over in the dugout, thanking them for the help because he couldn't find it, and somebody was probably screaming, "It's at your feet." Skipper Brian Price looks on as we wait a 3 2 pitch. Runner goes, and Young spoiled it. We'll do it again. Ball four. So two are on with two out. Fulton Evich with a long look into the Braves dugout, and he's going to stay in the game. So at the very least, the Braves clear the pitcher here in the fourth inning. Fulton Evich had a comeback over the bases loaded that ended the Braves' second inning. That's four walks for East Clefani. One was intentional. About first big league hit. There you go. Good speed aboard. Pitch. 
Line drive, left center field. That's headed for the gap. Here comes Simmons. He'll score. Here comes Young around third. They'll green light him. Full Tanevich with a two RBI double. No need for a pinch hitter. Fulty scorched one to the gap, and his family fired up. His first big league hit has made a game of it. It's three to two. Timing's everything. Good at bat by Eric Young, drawing the walk. Set that up. Now the top of the order coming up. Nick Markakis. Caught the outside corner. It's 0 and 2. He's entered play with the third best batting average with runners in scoring position in the National League. Let's see if Marquez can add to that 318 mark. At the start of tonight's play, that ball might be flat on one side. He hit it hard. <laughs> well, it is officially registered now. Marquake is doing what Nick Marquake is does. I was just going to say he can fight off some of the toughest pitches and frustrate the pitcher and catcher. Got a called strike against him on the outside corner. Now they've come back really tight in on him. See if they go away. Just that breaking ball down. Long inning for Di Sclafani. The one two pitch struck him out. Big night for Fulte. First big league start, first big league hit, first big league RBIs. Now, how about your first big league win? As we've said for so many years in this booth, we got a way to go. We go to the fifth inning.
Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. We got a game all of a sudden, 3-2 now. Here's your score as we head to the fifth inning. Mike Fultonavich with his first big league hit and RBIs has made it a one-run game. Time for our AT&T U-verse trivia question. Fultonavich makes his first MLB start tonight. Name the last pitcher to win his first major league start as a Brave. I wonder how far back we've got to go. Kyle Davies in Boston. Mike Miner. Uh, Mike. Sam Kozark leads off and takes a I was going to guess Jeremy Guthrie. You know, that's a good call, but somehow, in you know, like two nights in a row, probably yeah. not. Yeah, good point. Good, good point. <laughs> We're still very, very bitter about that trivia question. Re We're reeling. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are. And Kozart, a little pop behind second. Can anybody catch up to it? Peterson can. He makes a tumbling grab. And he might have hurt himself. Great catch by Jace Peterson to Rob Kozart to start the fifth. What did he do to himself? That doesn't look good. If he knocked the wind out of himself. I don't think he'd be able to breathe that deeply that quickly. Landed on his shoulder and back. You know, that wasn't win. We'll keep an eye on that as Votto has another hit. Joey Votto, two for two tonight. And he's aboard in front of Todd Frazier, who has struck out and hit into a double play. Well, he had two doubles last night. Two for two with a walk tonight. Votto does, as John Hart said, looks better than he's looked in a couple of years. Braves do have some activity again in the bullpen. It's like Donnie Veal and Cody Martin. So the meeting breaks up. Fultonavich back to the top of the hill. And Frazier ready to dig in. While we have a moment, want to send out happy birthday greetings to the finest bulldog of them all. Lauren Smith celebrates his birthday tonight. Does he? Well, what a coincidence. Didn't know that finest bulldog and the finest wife in the world shared the same birthday. Happy birthday to little Kathy Simpson today, too. Big milestone. Big one. Big milestone. Really? Mm -hmm. Care to elaborate? One nope. pitch. <laughs> Popped up. Left side. Will the wind push it back into play? No. It bounced on top of the dugout. No, I'd, I'd like to go home tonight. So happy birthday, Kathy. I'm sure we'll see it again later on this week as Frazier readies himself for a 1 1 pitch. 9 o'clock in Atlanta, 3 2 Cincinnati. We're through four. This is an interesting inning, too. Remember, Fulton Evich ran the bases. See how he fares after the two run scoring hit. Pitch and still humming at 96 miles an hour. Runner goes, pitch high, Brzezinski's throw. 
is high and away. So Votto has his second stolen base. He's four for four. In the stolen base department this year. Well, he gave that away too. He was leaning. I mean, he was so far out over his right foot and almost it was almost shaking. He had so much weight on it. Ooh. And then his slide a little bit similar to that of Chris Johnson last night. How about that swing by Frazier? He just got eaten alive on the inner half. And that's out number two in the inning. Does anybody slide feet first into second base anymore? I don't know of anybody. Chris Johnson got hurt. I've never run the bases in the base. Is that an instinct play or is it just it's just what you're habit. used to and what you're most comfortable doing? I think guys just get in the habit of it. You know, I I couldn't tuck either leg when I slid feet first. I always tuck my right leg under me. That was my habit. If I had to tuck my left foot under me, I'd probably have broken my leg. But I didn't know how to dive head first. I mean, I really didn't. And the two times, three times I may have done it, I tore my hands up, tore my hip bone up because I wasn't doing it right. And it wasn't. It didn't make any sense for me to keep doing that. No balls and a strike for Jay Bruce. There's the high heat at 97. Oh, and two. From the middle infielder standpoint, what would you rather try to tag? Someone's outstretched hand or someone spikes sure. at the bag? Yeah, all the hands, anytime. Chance you can knock them off the bag, just like Andrelton did. Andrelton did in the Washington series. Let's see if Mike can finish with a flourish. He's ahead of Bruce on two and a high fly ball toward left curling back toward Kelly Johnson and he's got it. Mike Fulton image is through five innings in Atlanta tonight. He's down a run. Bobblehead night on May 20th. If you buy two or more Kroger four game plans that include that May 20th game against the Tampa Bay Rays, this exclusive pregame VIP meet and greet offer is limited to the first 100 fans. So act now. Go to Braves.com/slash four game today. He settled in rather nicely, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it looked like he was getting the uh, glad hand though from everybody after coming back to the dugout. And showed some signs of brilliance, showed some toughness pitching through some innings where he had base runners. And if he leaves trailing three to two, remember one of those runs was unearned. I'd say it was a, a pretty good debut, especially when you know that he drove in the two runs for the Braves. One of those little league kind of nights. Yep. That's the good news. Bad news is the Braves trailed by a run, and Jace Peterson in between innings went up the tunnel. From the Braves dugout after that tumbling catch. Aspo to Billy Hamilton in center is retired, and there's the first out of the home fifth. Yeah, don't hit it to that guy, hit it to somebody else. Freddie Freeman, the batter. 
He's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. Good to see him smiling again. When he hits, he hugs and he smiles. Let's hope he's doing both in this at bat. Well, he's had a good home stand. Over two tonight, but he's hit it five straight. Five sixty-three on the home stand. Four runs, three doubles. Nice to add a long ball right here to that. Two homers so far on the year that Disclafani has allowed have been to lefties. There's the long ball, right size, wrong shape. Hit a mile. Wow, into the second level. Down the right field line. That's right where Bryce Harper hit that one the other night. Two and two. Oh, he wanted to swing at that, but it was too low. And Freeman coaches a walk. That's five of them tonight from the Reds right hander who had walked six all year long. Went back to the pitch that he struck Freddie out on in the first inning and able to get Freddie was able to lay off of it to draw the walk. Yeah, this guy drive you crazy. One side of the plate then the other slider breaking into you sinker going away. We've seen AJ hit a lot of low balls a long way. He's hit the ball hard twice tonight. Got robbed by Botto his last time up. Second inning single gives AJ Brzezinski a 13 game hitting streak. Big hole right side for him, one strike. And out of play foul. Good pitching matchup here in Atlanta. Tanevich for the Braves, Tisclafani for the Reds. AJ's a very good low ball hitter, so this guy's trying to keep the ball down. That plays into AJ's strength. That last pitch was up a little bit, and the best he could do is foul it off. This target. Brian Payne is only 5'8. He's 5'8, weighs 240 pounds. So for him to reach up that high, that's about helmet high to AJ. One ball, two strikes. And take it low, two and two. This is what you hope happens when you face the Reds. Make their pitchers work. Hopefully get them out of the game in the fifth, sixth inning and get into their bullpen. You don't want to face Chapman. But the others in the red pen have really had some problems. 2 2 count. AJ laid off that. Reds bullpen, worst ERA, 591 as a group. And that's even with the heroics of their closer, Aroldis Chapman. Let's see if Freddie's running here. He is. Big jump. Brzezinski swinging a miss. Pena's throw. Is saved by Phillips. And it's a good thing it was. Freddie Freeman has a stolen base, his first of the year. Brzezinski strikes out, but an RBI chance for Kelly Johnson, who was robbed by Hamilton last time up. Terrific play by Brandon Phillips backing up and keeping that ball from getting into center field because Freddie's slide, feet first, he pops right up, ready to go if it had gotten through. Billy Hamilton hustling in to back it up too. The Reds have been a very good defensive club the last two or three years. They've been at or near the top of the league defensively for quite a while. Well, you can understand that with Cozart and all his defensive run save that we talked about last night. The Golden Gloves of Brandon Phillips, the speed of Billy Hamilton. Yeah. Jay Bruce, one of the better throwing arms in baseball. 
in right field. And Todd Frazier now a very underrated defensive third baseman. An all star last year as well. One strike. Swing drive. Belt to deep right field. That ball is way out of here. Kelly just squared one up and hammered it last time up and was robbed by Billy Hamilton. Nobody could go get this one. 92 fastball that didn't do anything. That may be the first pitch all night he's thrown that didn't move except outward. That was a laser beam. The big crowds into the ball game. Joe called for that a couple of innings ago. Two in the fourth, two in the fifth, and the Braves lead four to three. Ground ball by Jace Peterson out to second. Phillips has it. And a big two out, two run homer for Kelly Johnson turns the game around for the Braves. Four three Atlanta. We go to the sixth. Avenue North will perform after the game on Sunday, May 24th. It's a free concert for everyone in attendance. Limited VIP field passes are available for the show for just $20. Act fast by visiting Braves.com slash concerts today. As always, thanks to our friends at Delta Airlines, proud sponsors of the Braves. We'll see Mac Coney and the gang after the Phillies leave town in the middle of next week. We'll head up to Washington. Ten years ago, Kelly Johnson was a baby brave. Now he's a grizzled veteran. He just hit a two-run homer, which could make one of the new baby braves a winner in his Atlanta debut. That's Mike Fultonevich. Yeah, he'll leave with the lead thanks to the 135th career homer by Kelly Johnson, and Cody Martin will take over, trying to get back on track after a rough outing his last time out a few days ago against Washington, where he gave up a hit, two walks, and two runs in his one inning of work. Brandon Phillips has a couple of hits tonight. He's driven in two and he's scored one. He's also recorded a pair of stolen bases. Chase Peterson, by the way, looked just fine getting down the line, trying to hustle on that ground ball. So hopefully he's okay. Ripped foul by Brandon Phillips. Nothing at two for the red second baseman and out of play. Remember what Freddie 
uh, Gonzalez said before the game about Fultonavich is he said we don't have any high expect or we don't have any expectations of him going seven innings of shutout ball or any projections like that. Just uh, give us a good solid outing with a chance to win, and, and I think that's what he's done tonight. Five innings, six hits, three runs, only two earned for him. Ninety-four pitches, and if I heard right, sixty-three strikes. Yes. You'll take that ratio anytime you can get it from a guy that throws in the upper 90s. And his former manager, Bo Porter, sitting together on the Braves' dugout bench as Phillips swings and misses. He just waves his hand dismissively at A.J. Prasinski, and he'll be rung up for the first out of the inning. I don't think he liked that result. Nope. So Phillips is the first out here is Marlon Byrd. Thank Mother Nature. Might yeah. have a different game. Remember the first inning, Marlon Byrd hit one a mile high and about six miles long, and it died right at the 380 sign. And he just missed a three-run homer, which would have made it a five-run first for the Reds. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen a pitcher give up a, a drive like that, turn his back on it, and ask the umpire for another ball and actually get it from the umpire who also thought it was going out. Another shot to left. Kelly has been very busy tonight. That's six putouts for Kelly Johnson and left. One of them off bat of Brian Pena. That was in the second inning. He's also flying out to center. Steer right from Cody Martin. I short changed Brian Pena an inch. Did you? Mm -hmm. He's 5'9, 240. Nothing too. JJ Hoover is up in the Reds bullpen and Brandon Bosch is a bat in the on deck circle. Hoover used to be in the Brave system. He came over for Juan Francisco on April Fool's Day. Three years ago. Oh, Cody thought he painted the corner. So did Anderson Simmons. Both took a step toward the Braves dugout. PNC Bank pitch tracks shows it a little off the plate. So for David Rackley. Some reinforcement. Exact same spot. Strike three inside corner and look at Pena. Pena rung up. Martin works a one, two, three, six.
case you hit it. Line drive, left center field. That's headed for the gap. Here comes Simmons. He'll score. Here comes Young around third. They'll green light him. Fultonevich with a two RBI double. No need for a pinch hitter. Fulte scorched one to the gap, and his family fired up. Great night tonight for Mike Fultonevich. His work at the plate, our Toyota key play of the game. That cut a 3-0 lead by the Reds to 3-2. Kelly Johnson followed with a two-run homer in the fifth. That chases Anthony DeSclafani, and now J.J. Hoover is on to pitch, and here is the vulnerable portion of the Reds' pitching staff. Their middle relief has really struggled. Saw his ERA is over five, but he only, really has only had one bad outing, and that was against Milwaukee in a game that the Reds won 16 to 10. Oh, well, that was the game with all the grand slams. Yeah, he gave up four earned runs and only got one out. That's really skewed his ERA. And there were three grand slams hit in that ball game. Fourth time in big league history that had ever happened. In fact, there were seven total homers in that game at Miller Park. That was the day after Jonathan Lucroy broke his toe. Things haven't gotten any better for Milwaukee since. They lost one nothing to the Cubs today at Wrigley. Simmons with a bunt try. Hoover fires to first and got him by a quarter step. Hoover's fastball 91 to 94. Got a slider that he used predominantly against right handers and a curveball. Young has walked twice, scored once. That last walk instrumental in the Braves' first two runs. Two out pass brought Fultonevich up and then he doubled to left center. Chilly night. Simmons trying to stay loose. And a shot to right field is a base hit for Eric Young. That snaps an 0 for 12 slide. And Eric Young's aboard with one man out. One run game here in Atlanta. One run game in New York. Classic flamethrowers duel at City Field. Max Scherzer and Matt Harvey. Mets won, Nationals nothing. Matt Harvey, I think, is four. Yeah, he's four and zero. Oh. Cody Martin going to hit for himself. That's upstairs. Ball one. Scherzer went seven innings and struck out ten. He's out of the game now. Harvey went seven innings and struck out three. Oh. He's also out of the game. Martin's first big league at bat. And that's up and in ball two. Did you, see, did you see his lips? He said, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what he said. The pitch was 92, and he's right. But it foul is as great as high definition television is at presenting this sport to fans at home. The one thing television cannot do in this sport and others is represent the true speed of a pitch for the fans at home. Yeah, for Cody, it's one thing to be on the other end of that 92. <laughs> it's a whole different uh -huh. story where he is right now. He pushed the butt to first. Votto with a look to second. No play. And Martin's first big league at bat is a successful sacrifice. Well done. Braves are much improved with their pitchers bunting this year. Those are all those so-called little things that were worked on tirelessly from the opening moments of spring training. And they have really paid off in regular season play.
So Marquez bats. Nick is 0 for 3. Low ball one. That caught a corner, even count. It's a nice run to pick up here in the sixth if Marcakis can deliver a two out hit. And he works the count to his favor. Two and one now. I really like watching this man hit. It's almost like there's a process every at bat. That he is not going to swing at too many bad pitches. He's going to make sure the pitcher gives him something he can swing at. Got something there, and he rolls out to second, and we head to the seventh inning. 4 3, Atlanta leads the Reds. Baseball is presented by AT&T U-verse, Delta Airlines, and your local Ford dealer. We head to the seventh inning. 4-3 Atlanta leads. The Reds have the 9-1 and 2 spots coming up, and Brendan Bosch will bat for J.J. Hoover. And he just broke his bat and pops out to short. Simmons drifts back. He's got it. And Brennan Bosch, the former Tiger who signed to a minor league contract, is an easy first out in the inning. Hoover went an inning, scoreless. He allowed the Eric Young base hit. Now Hamilton, the batter, then Kozart. When you look at the minor league numbers for Billy Hamilton. Crazy aren't they? They're, they're just ridiculous. This man. Had two seasons. One season in 2011 103 steals. 2012 104 steals at Bakersfield 51 more at Pensacola that's 155 <laughs> stolen bases in 132 games goodness and then the next year at triple a he stole stole 75 bases in 123 games then got to the big leagues with the Reds and made an immediate impact for the Cincinnati ball club 
This one's blooped down the left field line and in play for Kelly Johnson. He's got it in foul ground, two out. He stole 13 out of 14 bags at 368 and did that in 13 games. Yeah, and see, when he first came up, the reports were, boy, he can run, but he can't steal first base. So the image was that he was just a slapping, punching Judy, bunning guy, and he's anything but that. He can swing it. Zach Kozar at the batter. He singled, scored, flied out, and popped out. I hesitate to make the comparison, but we talked about this when we saw the Marlins and Ichiro singles hitter, but can ambush you and hit it a mile if he wants to. I think Billy Hamilton will be that kind of player too. Sharply hit and off the glove of Kiaspo. Simmons backed it up and made it a close play at first. So Cozart has an infield hit, and now Joey Fado will stride to the plate with a runner at first and two out. Right off the webbing. And with the lefty coming up to hit, looks like might be a lefty ready in the bullpen. We'll find out who that lefty is. Luis Avilan, it looks like. It'll be Avilan against Joey Fado with one on, two outs, and a one run. Atlanta lead. It's been a big night for Mike fulton and his family. They are here at the ballpark, and they're sitting by with Jen Hildreth. Jen? Well, Chip, after all that love the family got on camera, I had to come over and find them, and I know these guys are going to behave back there because I've got Mom, Cindy, right here next to me. Now, you told me it was quite a drive for you to get here, right? It took us 11 and a half hours. We drove straight through. <laughs> there was four of us in the car. But, but as you told me, you weren't going to miss this one. Oh, I was not missing this one. No way. No way. That, that hit out there was worth it. <laughs> now, when was the last time that your son actually had the hit in a game? There, his last at-bat senior year, 2010. 2010 at the uh, regional tournament. Okay. That was it. Yep. <laughs> well, he did pretty well. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And let's get another perspective on that. I'm coming back to you. We have Nico down here who actually also traveled in, and uh, you caught Mike in high school, correct? So what, what have you seen? Has he gotten a little better? Uh, he's always been good. I mean, uh, the nerves got him a little bit in the beginning, but that, that's just the way Mike is. I mean, he's, he's an athlete. He always comes to perform, and I couldn't be prouder as a friend watching him out there. I mean, he just... He amazes us all every time, so it's awesome to see it. And I'm so glad to be here. What would you have said to him in that first inning to kind of calm him down? I told him before the game, I said, hey, just do you, you know, let the nerves go. And he said, you betcha. And I know that you can say that to anyone, but until you're out there in the position that he is, you don't know the true meaning behind it. So I'm glad for what he did tonight, and I'm, I'm proud to be, you know, to call him my friend. So it was awesome. It was awesome. Great moment. I'm sure he's happy that you guys are all here now. Now tell me, were you a little surprised to see the ball come off his bat like it did? <laughs> no, not really. I knew he was going to hit it. I just knew it. I just knew it. <laughs> Especially after the first inning when he, he he missed it. You know, he hit it, but I was just like, well, at least he hit it. Uh -huh. So mom always believes. Nico, real quick, did you believe? Were you surprised he could do that? I, I, we talk about it all the time. He said he feels like the kid from the rookie in the back of the box shaking his legs. But I, I knew that in high school it was the same thing. You can never get a run, and he got it himself. So I, I, I wasn't shocked at all. No. He got the, all right. He got the batting record in high school. Well, look at that. That's a great stat. Mom's got all the answers. Thanks so much, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the game. Chip, let's send it back up. Hey, to you. way to go, Jen. That was awesome. And Mom's got a great vertical. Did you see her jumping up and down? Yeah. She was going nuts. Yeah, it was, that was some great stuff from his friend. Was it Tico? Nico. 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 Yeah. Uh, he was spot on talking about trying to get him to forget the nerves, lose the nerves. And he said, but it's a lot easier said than done. He's right. Luis Avila to face Joey Votto. One pitch, ground ball to short. Simmons will load up and make the peg to first. And that will take care of Cincinnati. Time to stretch Atlanta protecting a one-run lead in game two of four.
one app for live baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment within game highlights live look ins replay reviews radio broadcasts stat casts and more get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or for your tablet. New pitcher on for the Reds before we tell you who that is Mike Fulton his mom enjoying the game tonight. Her son is the subject of our AT&T Euros trivia question. Name the last pitcher to win his first baseball start as a Brave. I'm going to stick with Mike Miner. And I'll say Kyle Davies. That unforgettable start against the Red Sox in Boston. Oh. Speaking of unforgettable. This is Kevin Gregg. Remember him? A spectacled hard throwing relief pitcher. And a quick strike to Cayaspo. Four three Atlanta. We are late. And Turner Field pitch. Is low and outside. Two and one. Reds had four guys that were non roster players make their opening day roster. Along with Greg, it was Jason Marquis, the former Brave, Chris Dominguez, and Brendan Bosch, who we just saw. Red signed him in early February. Hundred seventy seven lifetime saves for Kevin Gregg. He's pitched a lot of teams. The Angels, the Marlins, the Cubs, the Jays, Baltimore, and now the Reds. Still throwing in the low 90s. And his claim to fame was always a good split finger pitch. If that's working, he's tough. You forget that when this man was with the Marlins back in 2007, he had 32 saves, 29 saves, 37 saves in 2010 with Toronto, 33 saves just a couple of years ago with the Cubs. Bouncing ball out toward Phillips at second, down the friendly hop. And he makes the peg to first for out number one. Time for our Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. And these are good facts. They sure are. They were cold and hard in 2013 and 14. But the percentage of swings and misses for the Atlanta Braves is now fifth best in the major leagues. At just over 19%. Making contact, putting it in play, and getting good results. Only five strikeouts for the Braves offense so far tonight. There were times last year we'd have five strikeouts in the first three innings. Yep. It has not well, happened much. Well, we've got the numbers, I think, to back up. Oh! That got him. Yep. That hit AJ. He's about to throw the ball at Freddie. <laughs> No hugs for you after. The <laughs> Fortunate it bounced once. That's outside. I started to say the Braves with this really good average of hitting with runners in scoring position. You can attribute that to putting the ball in play more. So often last year. We jinxed him. But so often last year with men in scoring position. It just seemed like they're the strikeouts piled up when the Braves had so many opportunities and left so many men on base because of strikeouts. I'll look and see. I can't remember off the top of my head what the Braves hit with runners in scoring position last year. I know it wasn't good. I want to say it was in the 220s or lower. Well, they're at 318 entering the game tonight as Prasinski rips one down the right field line foul. He 
goes. Foul down the left field line. The Braves hit 236. Nice play. Yeah. And fans Show it off. From Villarica. Excellent fielding fans. Yeah, it's an excellent fielding town. Right? Yeah. Fly ball center. Pretty well hit. Hamilton going back. Still going back. Still going back. And he face plants as he makes the third out. A.J. Brzezinski put a charge into one, but the park big enough to hold that. Top of the eighth coming up. Freddie Freeman and the Melanoma Research Foundation. The package includes a discount ticket, a pair of Freeman arm sleeves, and a $5 donation to that worthy cause. Sleeves are limited, so get your tickets today at Braves.com slash Freeman. Tonight's Toyota Tweet of the Week is, what is the key to turning things around for the Braves? Let us know using hashtag Braves Rebound. And your tweet could appear on the Braves live post game show. We saw the formula tonight. Well, honestly, good starting pitching, excellent defense, timely hitting, and some thunder from Kelly Johnson. Now, the final component shut down relief. Yeah, close the deal. Jim Johnson's been real good his last three outings. It's covered two and two thirds innings of two hit shutout baseball with no walks and one strikeout. So after a rough patch in the middle of April, he's rebounded with three good ones. I talked with Freddie before the game about Jim Johnson, and I thought he made an excellent point. We know how hard this man can throw. But when he was most effective, Freddie said, was when he changed speeds a little bit, throw a little breaking ball just to get the hitters off his fastball. And he thought in Toronto especially, Jim was just simply trying to over muscle the baseball. He's trying to throw it through the catcher. Right. And on all his pitches, not just his fastball. Fly ball toward right. Markakis is going to get there. Nice running catch. Todd Frazier's retired. He is 0 4 4 tonight. One Two. down. Two. What? This guy can hit the ball harder and farther one handed than anybody I've seen in a long time on pitches he's fooled on. There's a lot to like. About Todd Frazier. Uh -huh. They've had some outstanding third basemen in Cincinnati. Chris Sabo, Scott Rowland, Todd Frazier, among others. Jay Bruce takes down and in. One ball, no strikes. A walk and two flyouts to left for Jay Bruce. That pitch I was talking about. A little wrinkle in it, 89 miles an hour. Bruce took it. Followed by a 90 
94 mile an hour fastball. Mets shut out Washington. That's a final four to nothing. Matt Harvey defeated Max Scherzer tonight. Mets are back home and back in the win column at City Field. It's inside, even count for the Mets right fielder. Pirates one, Cardinals nothing, sixth inning in St. Louis. AJ Murdett and Lance Lynn. Swing and a miss. Bruce is down. There's that pitch to take a little off. Nice crowd tonight, 30,153. That's Kelly Johnson's home run ball. The fan caught it. Speaking of home run balls. Yeah, big news out of Boston, huh? Yeah. Bouncing ball foul at third. Alex Rodriguez could be six million dollars richer. He just hit home run number 660 that ties him with Willie Mays. On the all-time home run list. And whether or not the Yankees pay that remains to be seen. Only five home run clauses in his contract for a rod once he reaches specific milestones. 660 714 755 762 and then of course 763. And it puts the Yankees in front of the Red Sox 3 2 the Yankees are. Playing good baseball. Lead the East. Nice play, Kiaspo to charge a Phillips chopper, and Jim Johnson has a very, very solid eighth inning. He got three outs on 11 pitches. Braves look for some home insurance, leading 4-3. Summary in Atlanta. It's game two of the series, and the Braves are an inning away from evening things up with the Reds. Good work by all those gentlemen there in the Braves caps. Fulton Avich weathered the storm in the first inning, gave up a couple of runs, gave up an unearned run later, but then his own two run double, Kelly Johnson's two run homer, put him on top before Fulton Avich left the ball game. AJ Brzezinski's extended his hitting streak. Brandon Phillips and his return home. What's new? Couple more hits. Always likes playing in Atlanta. Here's one of the Braves hitting heroes, Kelly Johnson. A long home run. Back in the fifth inning. 
all four Atlanta RBIs tonight have come with two outs. As we get our first look at Carlos Contreras. His 18th game, well, 17 games last year, which was his first appearance in the big leagues. Throws in a 90 to 95 with a curveball. This year, it's only his second game since getting called up. This year made the jump to the big leagues from double A. Made quite an impression July 11th against the Pirates became the first Reds pitcher since 1989 to strike out the side on nine pitches. Rob Dibble once did that for Cincinnati. Just a kid 24 years old. Kelly yanks that one behind first. Long run Phillips, long run Votto, and Joey Votto makes a nice catch. And Kelly is out number one in the eighth. Jace Peterson's hit streak is on the line in the eighth inning. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Made a marvelous catch earlier tonight. Rob Zach Cozart. Hit the ground hard, but he stayed in the game. Appears to be okay. One ball, no strikes. Fox Sports 1 has the game tomorrow night. Eric Stoltz and Jason Marquis will be the twirlers. Joe and I are back with you on Sunday for the series wrap up. Should be a good one. Julio Tehran looks for some redemption. Johnny Cueto. Makes his 200th big league start. Cueto's tough, a 195 ERA and a 2 and 2 record. And a free agent to be. John Hart was here, you heard him mention. Tough blow for the Reds. They've lost Homer Bailey. He's going to have Tommy John surgery on Friday. And shortens their staff quite a bit. Is that one good enough for a strike? Three and one. You know, I, I hate even hearing about it because I know how painful it was last year in spring training to lose two guys in back to back days and what it. A punch to the gut it is to your whole organization when you're counting on some people, counting on some guys that'll help hopefully get you into the postseason. So that's the case with Cincinnati losing a guy like Homer Bailey. Really tough loss. And you have to wonder if the Reds stay in the race. Let's be honest, it's not New York, it's not Chicago, it's not LA. They don't have gigantic TV deal money would they have the resources to go out and add a pitcher to their ball club with all the big contracts they already have and Phillips and Votto and Bruce and Bailey for example I know they like to be in that situation yeah well John he's pretty resourceful though and they've got a good farm system so it may be one of those things if they are in the hunt that's what they'd have to do And it's a little late. Let's face it, DiSclefani. Look, I mean, he's on the short end of things tonight, but he looks good and he's off to a good start. I'm sure he's a guy that they were hoping would be kind of the back end of the rotation support, but all of a sudden he's elevated himself to a little loftier position. Well, as I said earlier tonight, in any order you want to put him, you go Cueto, Leak, and DiSclefani. That's that's yeah. not too shabby. And Jason Marquis is a veteran guy. He knows how to pitch. He'll gobble up a lot of innings for you. But do they have enough in rotation and more importantly, middle relief? You know they're going to score runs. You know they're a really tough team to play in their ballpark. And you know their closer, Roldis Chapman, is as good as anybody. Yeah, the worst thing for them is to score a bunch of runs and then somehow in the sixth, seventh, or eighth inning lose the lead so they're not able to use Chapman like they'd like. It's an amazing stat about Aroldis Chapman. 
His strikeouts per nine innings last year was 17.7. <laughs> and he hit 100 miles an hour on a pitch in 53 of 54 appearances. Fly ball center. And Hamilton will track that one down for out number two. So two more with Cincinnati after tonight. Fox Sports one tomorrow night. Joe and I with you on Sunday. Then we'll welcome the Phillies in town. All the Phillies little payback starting Monday night. Three games set. And then we hit the road again. We'll go to Washington, Cincinnati, and then another look at the Marlins. Phillies are tied with the Marlins in the ninth. Down south, 3-3. Three, three. Did you see the numbers on Chase Utley, by the way? I know he didn't play yesterday. Maybe it's two days ago against the Cardinals. Chase Utley hit 114 in April. I think they should release him. Well, it'll be about 29 other teams who would be <laughs> happy to take Chase Utley. I don't care if he's hitting 114 or not. Marlins are playing good ball all of a sudden. Usually they've been playing good ball for about two weeks. D. Gordon, by the way, finished April with 38 hits and a 409 batting average. That's the highest Marlin batting average at the end of April in the franchise's history. He's and he gonna... probably would have had a good shot at winning National League Player of the Month if it weren't for the month that Adrian Gonzalez had, which was crazy numbers for the Dodgers. Swing and a miss by Eric Young Jr. And this game goes to the ninth inning. Lower third coming up for the Reds. Bird, Pena, and then we'll see Jason Grilly will try to protect a 4-3 lead in Atlanta after this. Field. Come out to the ballpark May 23rd when the Brewers come to town and stay after for a free post game movie on Braves Vision. Get all the details, including which movie we'll be showing and how you can get unlimited popcorn throughout the game at Braves.com slash movie night. Cameron Maven takes over in center. Eric Young Jr. shifts to left. And Jason Grilly is on to try to save it for Mike Fultonevich. Jason, of course, what? Like to get the bad taste out of his mouth from that blown save against Washington, his first of the year. That home run to Ugla, the deciding blow. And a strike to Marlon Bird. Boy, Jim Johnson looked good. Sure did. Perfect one, two, three inning with a punch out. Bobby Long got a big out, got followed a ground out. Cody Martin, an inning and two thirds of scoreless relief. 
Michael Tanevich gave up three runs, only two earned. Larry Johnson's homer put the Braves in front and has protected the lead since. Four two. Shouldn't be too many surprises from the Reds with Jason Grilly. All those games he pitched while with the Pirates. Locked AJ Prozinski. Foul tip. Well, he got hit by Freddie Freeman on a foul ball. Now Marlon Bird with a wake up call in the night. Swing and a miss didn't get a breaking ball. Good start for Grilly in the ninth. One man down. Great spot. Great pitch. Well, it's such a luxury to have a shutdown bullpen. Tonight, the Braves' pen has retired 10 of 11 hitters. The only man to reach was Cozart on an infield hit. Yeah, no walks. Yeah. Straight back by Pena, even count. One ball, one strike. Devin Mesoraco, a catcher for the Reds, will be the pinch hitter next. AJ held it there for a moment. Must have been outside. Two balls and a strike. Pena too. You ought to see a hittable pitch. Three balls and a strike. Got the fastball and he fouled it back. Was his best one of, of the evening. 95 in on his hands. The line was Kiaspo and he couldn't get it. Pena around first will slam on the brakes as he records a one out hit. And now will be Devin Mezzarocco. And a pinch runner is going to come on for Pena, too. It's Christopher Negron. Oh, just out of his reach. Pesky at bat. Uh, Brian Pena. Well, they got to be wary of Mesoraco. Made some history last year for the Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati Ball Club has had exactly two catchers 
do what Mezzarocco did last year. And that's hit 25 homers and drive in 80 or more runs. Any guesses as to the other one would be? Maybe. Yeah. Johnny Bench. Yeah. In fact, he had homers in five straight appearances. Five straight games. He's two for three with a homer against Jason Grilly in his career, too. And Grilly is the man against whom that streak began last June. That's ball strike. One ball, one strike to count. He's having a tough time, but he's a dangerous fastball hitter. Good fastball away from him. He had oblique and hamstring problems last year for the Reds. This year, just two for 22 at the plate. Made the all-star team last year, I believe. He did. One ball, one strike. Fly ball, but not deep enough. Young is there. There's the second out. Mazzarocco hit it straight up and into the teeth of that brisk wind. That's two of those tonight that have gone the Braves' way, and now Grilly's an out away from sealing the deal. We showed you Kelly Johnson a minute ago. He's the guy that's hit the go ahead home run for the Braves, but in the very first inning, two to nothing already in favor of the Reds. And this ball that looked like it was headed halfway up the terrace level got caught in the wind, and Kelly caught that one right at the base of the fence. It was a two run inning instead of a five run inning because of that third out. 30,000 on their feet. Billy Hamilton stands in the way of a Braves win. He's doubled in four trips tonight. Strike one. System with that outer edge. PNC Bank shows you is a little bit outside. Hamilton showed us that he could turn around a fastball as he did from Fultonavich with a line drive out in the first and a double to right in the second on fastballs. And the wind is blowing toward the right field corner. So favorable for the left hand hitters. One ball, one strike. That painted the edge. One and two. Boy, this is perfect right there. If you're a closer and make that pitch nine out of ten times, you're going to make a good living out there. A one two pitch. Ground ball to second. Jace has it. Throw to first. Braves win 4 3. Kelly Johnson with a go ahead two run homer. Mike Fultonevich with his first big league hit, first big league RBIs, and his first win as a Brave in his first big league start. Atlanta beat Cincinnati 4 3 is your final score. The series is tied up a game apiece. We'll have more from a rockin' Turner Field after this.